Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com here at the factory on a Sunday afternoon, and that's why the hair is down and this hat is on. You can get all of your I Shoot Raw merch at store.fronosphoto.com, by the way. A bunch of people were sending me messages asking me to take a closer look at the JPEGs that came out of the Z7 during the launch event in New York City. Now, I want to remind you that all the images that I captured were done with a pre-production camera with beta firmware. That is what Nikon is asking us to say in order to use these images. They didn't say I couldn't share the images. And I do find it interesting that the camera company like Nikon would let us use pre-production models and beta firmware and take the files home. Generally speaking, if a company has a beta firmware in a camera, they don't let us touch the files or even take them away from there. So in my opinion, I think the hardware is definitely locked and loaded and ready to go. And the firmware is probably pretty darn close. So if there's something that is well off, they may be able to fix it in a firmware. But I pretty much think what they handed us is going to be what we're gonna get on September 27th when the cameras get released. So I'm gonna put up a bunch of these JPEGs that I captured that are straight out of the camera. Now please understand, we didn't have a long time with the cameras to set them up. So the JPEGs, I didn't tweak any picture styles. They are whatever they were set on. The only thing I turned off was high noise reduction. I turned that off all the time because I don't really want that on in my files. I prefer to have the noise and the grain be sharp then smoothed out. I have the raw files, but we don't have a converter for them, so we can't open them just yet. And before I turn into the images, Dan is gonna do his best to cut in footage, if he has it, of me shooting the scenarios that I'm showing you. Because we had the Atomos connected to the top of the camera, that means you're gonna to get to see the focusing points moving. You're gonna see how the camera handled and how it was set while I was shooting. And if you haven't checked out the other Z7 videos that we've done, the preview and the hands-on preview, the links are down below, also the I button in the top corner. So let's get to this right now. First picture, I was literally sitting on the ground to take this picture because I was setting up the camera. I saw Gampat right here and I was just like, okay, I'm gonna take his picture, and that's what I did. I had the uh, 35 1.8 on there, just playing around. Like I said, I quickly set up the camera the best that I could uh, in the time that, well, we had plenty of time to set it up, I just didn't have as much time to shoot, so I didn't wanna waste the time fully setting it up, but went through the menu system, tweaked what needed to be tweaked, um, and again, JPEG, this is not edited at all, and it's sharp. Um, again, pre-production, these are JPEGs, so the camera is doing a bunch of work. Um, I didn't have trouble, a lot of trouble, with the autofocus. The autofocus seemed to work very well for me. I shot a bunch of them in dynamic area AF. Now, in the Nikons, you used to have dynamic area AF 9, uh, 21, 72, and 153, I believe. And it's a little different in a camera like this. I think that the, you'll, you'll see in the, in the footage that Dan has, I don't think he has footage of the first couple shots, but other shots where the dynamic area looks like it covers a much larger area than it would on my D850 or the, the Nikon D5. Uh, I prefer the area to be smaller. The reason that you use dynamic area AF is because you, you have the focus point in the middle and then you've got the eight that surround it. So if the subject that you're photographing moves around that area, you have a better chance of the camera knowing through the algorithms to keep it in focus. So that's Gampat, that's Gampat here just sitting down, that sharp to me, hit the eye right on. I made sure to move the focus point where it was. Again, no IAF, which would be wonderful. Still sitting in the same exact spot, I figured I would turn over here and photograph uh, while Steven was setting up. I don't even know if the Atomos was on yet, um, but I wanted to get the just some shots of this girl over here. Um, the settings won't always be perfect, and I'll call those out in just a second. But in terms of focus, at where was I at? 2.5, ISO 500, 1 12 50th of a second using mechanical shutter. This is pretty much spot on where it needs to be. Now, I will tell you that Nikon setups are terrible. They did a terrible job setting up stations for us to photograph on. They're not very unique. The models were great. They're always great, everybody that uh, participates there, but the, the setups are terrible. Sony does a tremendous job. They actually bring in film crews that light commercials and build sets and do movies, and they do it right, and they have a much better setup for taking sample images 
of whatever you're taking sample images of. This was a really bad setup, but that's no excuse for not getting good pictures. You still need to understand your exposure triangle and how to deal with every lighting situation, even if it's low light situations. You still need to know what you're doing because you are smarter than the camera. Still sitting on the ground, this is a 4000 ISO one. You can say that the grain looks like there's some noise there, but again, the JPEG is going to show a little more noise. It should do better than this with the raw file. Um, exposure wise, 1 1250th of a second. I don't need to shoot that high with the guys not moving, but again, just playing around with the camera, getting a feel for it. This was just the sample shots. Then I switched into the silent mode because that's a mode that I'm going to want to use. And we all know that people give me a lot of shit when I shoot at 1 3200th of a second and tell me the camera's not supposed to do that and that's where you're going to get a lot of banding issues. Well, okay, so I did it and you've got your banding. Uh, just look at the, the banding here. Some of this, of course, is caused, we know, by the flickering of LED lights, but it, it exists. It doesn't exist when you shoot at the same thing, well, this is a 1 1250th of a second with a mechanical shutter. It just doesn't exist. This isn't a good example, I mean, this isn't good that it's doing this, but if you do keep your shutter speed lower, you won't run into those banding issues that look like this. So you need to be careful with the situations that you're in. Um, moving on, same thing though, but I dropped the shutter down to 1 400th of a second, switched over to the crappy 24 to 70 f4s. Yes, I called it crappy because that's, it feels like a kit lens. I'm not happy with the launch lenses at all. I think they don't represent what this system is capable of. They are expensive, overpriced, and just not the right launch lenses. I just don't think that they're quality enough for what I'm personally looking for, especially the F4. I just don't like the feel of it. All right, now I know we definitely have video of this. So now I'm over with the 24 to 70 F4S. I'm at 1 400th of a second, reasonable, uh, to freeze him doing his movements. Uh, ISO 1600, and we're at F4 because it's an F4 lens. So you zoom in here, focus is fine. I, can't tell you exactly off the top of my head what focus modes I'm in, but you can see it on the screen if we have the video running. You can see uh, from the Atomos, it will show you exactly what I had set. But I'm just wanting to shoot from the side, just seeing what I could capture, um, and it seems to be fine. This one looks like the focus missed a little bit. I don't know if it's hitting inside the cup or it's off, um, or I didn't move the focus point quick enough but then I got the point right on this guy. Obviously he's standing still. I better be able to nail this. If I can't nail this, I suck as a photographer. Uh, I can't wait to see the comments on that in the comment section, but keep going, keep going. Again, not tweaked. I usually would tweak all my files, especially because I shoot raw, but from the side, this is good. We're sharp, looks fine. Keep moving. Drippity, 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 pouring in some stuff. You also have to contend with a lot of people uh, in your shots because this is a press event, so everybody has cameras. This is just a terrible setup. Sure, there's lots of colors. They could have done something better with the background, like built a bookcase or like a classic bar back or something, but Nikon generally doesn't have the same budget that uh, Sony does to make stuff like this happen. So there's that. Now, we're gonna run through this image. It's one, uh, I'll just select them all. Cause I just held the button down just to see. This is, 33 images selected. So I shot, I'm pretty sure, 33 images in a row or a couple of bursts in a row. Now I was with the five and a half frames a second because I wasn't in the high plus mode. Now I learned more about the high plus mode after the fact because I thought it was gonna dumb down my shooting and not be as good. They say you get nine frames a second in high plus where it locks in the exposure on the first frame and then does continuous focus but that's in 12-bit uncompressed, uh, sorry, 12-bit compressed raw. If you make it 14-bit uncompressed raw, you get eight frames a second and it locks in the exposure. And I thought that, and it still does autofocus. And I thought with locking in the exposure, I was losing something. And then after the fact, I thought about it. I'm like, well, I shoot manual. And so my exposure is already locked in. And all that I need to do to, when I need to change it, is take my finger off the shutter button, put the finger back down if I made a change, and it's gonna lock in on the first shot there. Once you stop, it's gonna relock in each time. So you could do those eight frames a second shooting uncompressed 14-bit raw instead of getting the nine. So we can run through this. For the most part, well, there's some crappy photos. That's in focus. This one, it's just a crappy photo. Uh, I, I, sh I went to 1 500th of a second. I probably should have been a little faster for freezing some of this action, but he's moving all around left and right. Not, not the most extreme 
of movements, but this is just an example to show you. That's pretty close. Again, it's that f4 lens, which you kind of think, oh, it may not be sharp or there may be some issues because of that lens. I just don't like that kit lens at all. They can call it an S-line all they want, but what is truly an S-line to me, they should have the G-line, except for that Sony already has the G-Master lenses, considering that they're their top ones. So yeah, just holding down the shutter, trying to keep everything in focus. That's good. Still going through here. So he's moving all around. Focus is tracking him. That looks to be borderline, hard to say, with the JPEG. And just bleeping through this. Boom, boom, boom. Moving around. How do we do? Just zoom in. Looks good. Look, if, if, you, if you're in dynamic area AF and I, and I put it on his face in continuous focus, there's no reason why it should be missing. Um, ooh, look at that. There you go. And then that was it. So there you have all of those shots. That's all with the mechanical shutter. It looks, it looks fine. Um, again, remember, preview. This was a pre-production camera, so anywhere that you see somebody calling it a review, you can't call a review of a camera a review that doesn't exist in the wild yet and where you can't open the raw files to make your final judgments. And I know that they're not final judgments that some people are putting out there, but again, calling things reviews that are more previews and first looks and hands-on is more what they are and you have to be realistic with what they are at the beginning because that's what we're dealing with right here. Um, so now this is with the adapter on because a lot of people want to know how is the adapter. This is with the 14 to 24 millimeter on there and the focus was fine. Um, it's great that I can adapt to 14 to 24 and all my F lenses right off the rip. I'm at 1 2,000th of a second F2.8 ISO 1250. Again, this is fine. She is moving quite a bit. So I can just show you, well, I had more images. All right, I'm gonna show you those more images real quick. Cause I was blowing through some of those. We started with this and just moving through, keeping the focus point locked in on her face right here. I may have been in single for some of this just to see what would happen, but I was in continuous for others. Again, remember zooming in one to one. This is a JPEG. There looks to be some smoothing going on in there. I wouldn't normally do that because I'd be shooting raw, so I'd be in control of it. So then let me show you, yeah, so I was happy with how that turned out. Now, the reason there's a picture of my hand is that's to let me know that the pictures after were done with the electronic shutter. Again, with the electronic shutter, as we look down here, you can see banding. Of course, a lot of people may say that's from the LED lights. I'm at 1 2,000th of a second at f2.8, which is fine for somebody who's moving around uh, and you wanna freeze the motion, which is what I was going for. And anybody going, couldn't you just drop your shutter speed to 1 1,000th of a second? Absolutely, I totally could. In order to do that, I would drop it one stop to 1 1,000th. I would drop 1250 down to like 640 ISO. And from there, it would be the same exact exposure that we're looking at here and I would still be able to freeze her. But you know, there's nothing wrong with shooting at a high shutter speed. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not wrong to do this, but yes, I could drop the shutter, the ISO in the shutter in comparison, like I said, by one stop. Just showing you that there is banding. You can see it in her neck right here. You can see it all the way through the image, actually. There's these subtle bands that are happening at one two thousandth of a second. So if it does show up in certain lighting situations, it doesn't show up as much here, it could be again from the lights, but you can see the banding in her leg, and then you can also see it all the way here in the bottom of the image. Um, closer look, same thing. And then we switched off, I switched over to the 70 to 200 2.8 back into mechanical shooting because it's a loud area, I don't need to be in silent. And this is where I adapted the 70 to 200 2.8 and it nailed the focus on her face. Uh, I may have been trying face detect on this, trying to figure out if it would work well. Uh, it worked for a minute, then it didn't really follow her around. So I switched out of that, but you can see that it nailed the focus with the adapter, which is something that people really want to know about, is how does it work with the native lenses, with the native adapter, the uh, FTZ, and that looks really good. Uh, here's another setup they did. You have this girl, 7200. Now I drop the shutter speed to 1 400th of a second, f2.8, ISO 1000, more in lines of what you would shoot a portrait with, because um, it doesn't, she's not moving around. 
That looks good on the eyeball, 70 to 200. Great to be able to do that. Same thing right here. Um, again, not tweaked. If I was to tweak this, I would just sit here and do some tweaky McTweakersons. Change the color just a little bit. I was in auto white balance, but if I had the raw files, we would tweak them much better. Focus is close. It may be right here under the eye in this case. I was also still in the dynamic area AF. For portraits like this, I should switch off at the single point. They now have something called pinpoint. I tried the pinpoint. I couldn't get the camera to shoot with it because if it's not pinpoint in focus, then it's not going to shoot unless you tell the camera to release, which is what I usually do, but it wasn't set that way. Um, I will have to test out pinpoint more to see how pinpoint actually works. We only have a couple more images here. This was a test with the 50 millimeter Sigma lens to make sure that it could autofocus on the adapter because that's a major question that not too many people looked into was can you use a third party lens with the adapter? Now Nikon doesn't open up how, uh, they don't open up their mount system to Tamron, to Tokina, to uh, uh, Sigma to allow them to natively make lenses for the mount. They have to reverse engineer the system in order to make their lenses. They do that probably because they want to sell more lenses and not the third party lenses. Sony on the other hand has opened up their mount for Sigma, Tamron and third party manufacturers to make native lenses so that they can make them much easier that they talk to the system because Sony knows they have a lot of catch up to, well they had a lot of catch up to do in terms of lenses and in this case Sigma and Tamron have started to come out with native glass for those Sony cameras and Nikon's answer is you, you can adapt your F mount lenses, which to me is fine because I like using my F mount glass. I don't own any Sigmas or Tamrons or Tokinas um, myself. So it did work. It worked fine. The next image is nice and sharp, even at 1.4, super narrow, shallow depth of field. But when you're further back shooting a subject that is flat like this, facing one way, even at 1.4, you're going to get that in focus. And then this is at 1.4 as well, uh, focusing in on the face, and it looks fine. Um, using the mechanical shutter, it worked well. So we can see that there's some banding issues at certain shutter speeds. At slower shutter speeds, you're not seeing it as much, and if you were out in bright daylight, you probably wouldn't see the banding issues at all. Uh, whether they're issues or not, it's just, the, it's just the nature, as we've learned from shooting Sony, that it's more so the nature of how the lights flicker than the camera, see it's an education, uh, you learn this as you go along, that it's more of the lights flickering that are bouncing off that's causing it, but maybe one day all the companies will get this better. I'm not happy that there's flickering, it would, it would ruin the image, but if I had to shoot silent and it was the only choice I had, then I would have to cognizantly uh, make sure that my shutter speed is slower than I normally would possibly want to shoot it because I don't want to get that banding in my images. Overall, focus-wise for me, I hit a lot of the times with the autofocus. The autofocus is set up a little different than what you would find in a D850 or a DSLR. They've tweaked some things and it takes a minute to get used to it, uh, but if you've shot with Nikon before and you sit there and you start to learn a little bit about these settings and how the, how the new autofocus system works, then you really shouldn't have a problem going there. Now, I really want to test out the final release version when that comes out and we'll be able to push it to more of the extremes in low light situations. I want to shoot a concert. There's a lot of things that I do want to shoot with this camera to see how well it reacts in multiple situations and how the autofocus is and how the mount works, how the native lens works, uh, the native Z lenses, because I'm not happy with those right now. I wouldn't recommend people buying them. I'd rather adapt the glass. Nikon can sit there and tell you all day long that how, how sharp it is and edge to edge. It's still Launching with 1.8s instead of 1.4s and 1.2s is a mistake in my opinion. And the 24 to 70 f4 just feels like a, they all feel plasticky and light and, and, and expensive. Um, but if you want a native lens and you want to buy the kit, you're gonna, it's going to be $400 less to get the 24, uh, the, the 24 to 70 f4. Not my choice of lenses. I wouldn't be happy with those at all. Um, again, you can leave your questions down below. You can download these JPEGs over on the website. I'll put a bunch of them up there for you to play with. Not that there's much playing to be done because they're not raw files, but I just wanted to talk to you now, give you an insight look, inside look at the JPEGs that are straight out of the camera from the pre-production beta firmware camera. Um, no apologizing for Nikon at all. Uh, 
the bad lighting situation doesn't help them at all. They, it would be really nice if they did set that up better. Um, but yeah, this is not a review. We're just looking at the images here based off of the pre-production model and it's showing us what it's showing us and, and hopefully it's good. In my opinion, did pretty well. Uh, focusing was pretty good for what I was doing, especially with the adapter on, as you saw with the 7200. It looked awesome. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo. Dot com. See ya.